Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the second season of Star Trek October, a Star Trek Adventures actual play. If this is your first time joining us, hello and welcome. Uh, we are set in the year 2414 aboard a specialized starbase in the far reaches of the Sabine Expanse. Uh, this game is in the shared universe canon as Fenrir, Matahari, and Groundskeepers, but you don't really need to have watched any of those to enjoy October. But if you are interested in playing catch up, either on those shows or season one of October, you can get the uh, VODs on YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. A uh, couple of announcements this week. Uh, the first is that I have recently started up several Cyberpunk Red campaigns, and uh, I think they've been pretty well so far. Um, so if you get a chance and you do get a chance to look at the VODs, uh, give my Cyberpunk stuff a, uh, a look-see. Uh, the second thing I'd like to sort of point out is that channel points on Twitch are back. And the reason for that is because I will be doing a little bit more video gaming and a little bit more non-tabletop uh, role-playing stuff, and there's going to be redemptions for that sort of thing. Um, and yes, there is a Mysterious Point redemption for 800-some-odd points. You're just going to have to wait for details on that. Uh, other than that, uh, let's just go around and have everyone introduce themselves, uh, starting with Captain Kishwick. Everybody, I'm Dag. I play your Zaldin, Captain Kiswick. I have no idea what's in store for this episode because if you caught the last episode, it really threw me through a loop. I love these guys, but we're going to have a great game tonight. Catch it. You can check me out on Twitter at Trek Nexus to talk about it. Uh, John here. I play Terrell, the pilot, and uh, looking forward to our game today. Hello, everyone. I'm Matthew. I play uh, Lieutenant Jana, the Chief Engineer, the Cation Chief Engineer of October, and I'm certain that we will have another great session. These are hard to follow. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm Aaron. <laughs> I play our Tellarite Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Keeve Dothig, and I think we're going to have a really good game. Beat that, Rodney. Okay. Uh, I'm Watney. I play the empathic chief of security of Deep Space October, Lieutenant Commander Stetko. Um, let's do it. All right. And of course, if you don't know me, I'm ELH, your game master for the evening. And with that, let's go ahead and run our intro. too bad yeah well speaking so. of things are too bad and the stream's highly confused now welcome back from our introduction uh something i like doing with all my star trek games is i like having the players do an opening monologue and i believe today we have that from captain kiswick captain's log supplemental i'm still recovering from my harrowing experience having been infected with the parasite that had me believing i was losing my mind First, it tried to convince me that Jaro admitted he was a changeling. Then it exacerbated my acknowledgement of young Lieutenant Jana's attractiveness. It became even stranger when I was officiating the wedding between Stetko and Kord, who Stetko hates. It turned, it tried to turn me from Dr. Dodig and my wife by persuading me they were pursuing each other and then completely wiped her from my life. In its ultimate attempt to claim my life, it had me believing I was stuck on Earth in the past in a sanitarium. I'll admit, I very nearly fell to its insanity. If not for the empathic influence of Stetko in the real world, 
manifesting as herself in my delusions, I could have succumbed to the infection. I thank my team and my doctors and my connection to my wife, Jen. In a curious twist, Jaro and Jana were escorting me to my quarters to rest afterwards when I came across the old man who has been haunting the station. The last time I saw him, he said he'd been following my career or the career of Starfleet. I am not certain, but now we've gathered an ops as we seem to have a lot to talk about. Indeed. So uh, we are going to start in ops uh, with all of you present. And that means that Dottig, you've come up from sickbay. Uh, Hatea has come over from her uh, rounds on your lovely Luna class, the USS Umbriel. So pretty much everyone here is hands on deck. And there's even like uh, ensigns and other command staff sort of waiting in the wings to take notes, as it were. But uh, the one constant and the one oddity here is the old man. And what I would say, again, since it has been a quote-unquote new season, uh, the old man looks to be maybe in his late 50s, early 60s, maybe even older. Uh, gray, scruffy beard, uh, tattered clothing that would suggest uh, homelessness in certain contemporary periods of Earth. In general, not the kind of person you expect to be some sort of strange entity coming in and out of your lives. And pretty much in the entire way here to Ops, Kijwick, Terrell, and Janna, um, you haven't been able to get a word out of him. He's just sort of followed behind you on your way to Ops. And as people are gathering, you know, even if you ask him questions, he doesn't answer anything. He just continues to stare stoically at the holographic display uh, above the uh, main center table of Ops. But uh, once everybody has gathered, uh, the old man sort of clears his throat. And he says, I don't have long before I'm pulled away again, so I will tell you what I do now. The Sona, you may know of them. They have existed into the 26th century, at which point they have created an experimental doomsday dreadnought capable of causing subspace tears across an entire sector. It is one of my duties to see that the Milky Way does not turn into a large subspace tear. Now, I'm telling you this because the reactor that powers this dreadnought is so powerful it's capable of creating interphasic bridges between intersecting universes. Which, I believe, if I understand Starfleet correctly, you've experienced before when the old USS Defiant was encountered by your Captain Kirk. Now I'm telling you this again because your dreadnought, this dreadnought, will show up in approximately, he kind of looks around, 24 hours, about two clicks off of your station. Now, I would recommend simply destroying this dreadnought, but perhaps studying it would give you a way to reverse damage to subspace, something I understand the Federation has been seeking ever since the Hakaras Corridor. And he stops talking, takes a moment to look around, says, unfortunately, my time is up. And it's one of those things where everybody doesn't blink at once, but when everybody does blink, by the time everybody notices, the old man is completely gone. But uh, as sort of a parting gift, the holographic display uh, is now showing a Sona Dreadnought class. Um, it is stereotypical in Sona designs where it's either retro, ah, actually rather flat, if you think of it from a height perspective. Um, it's a bunch of horizontal curves and a bunch of swooping arches. Um, and what you're seeing is quite a large craft. We're talking easily uh, almost the size of the station saucer section. So it's, it's a big one. And that is where I'm going to let you guys start to jump in here guess we'll forego the question and answer period. Jana, Jaro, I don't know if we can take this guy seriously, but can you investigate these schematics and see if there's any real impact to them and they're not just some kind of trumped up illusion? Uh, well, it, it might be somewhat difficult to ascertain that, but we can certainly look at the validity of any kind of technology that they'll be using based on contemporary understanding of Sona isolytic weaponry. Uh, we could extrapolate something from that. 
Yeah, and uh, yeah. why don't we actually do the first roll of season two? Uh, Jana, if you want to give me a uh, insight engineering uh, difficulty of one. And because someone did request it in chat, basically what John is going to do is he's going to add his insight and engineering scores together. He's going to roll 2d20, and every die that comes up underneath his combined insight engineering score is a success. And he needs at least one. And would my Starship Construction focus apply here? I think it would. All right, so that's two successes, which means you get one momentum. I mean, Jana, it is the 26th century, supposedly, so there are some technological concepts that you sort of look at and go, I didn't think of, I didn't think that was possible kind of a thing. But on the whole, this does seem to be legit. Uh, well, Captain, from what I can tell, it does seem to be a, a, a natural evolution of contemporary Sona designs, although these... Uh, Warp intake manifolds that are supplemented by artificial quantum singularity sub engines is it's a, it's a kind of unification of ancient Romulan technology and warp plasma intakes that I've never actually seen before. But th that's really beside the point. Although we really should try to take this vessel if it exists whole. There's technological innovations here that could benefit the Federation immensely. Just well, first things first is the duty to the station and its crew. Jaro, uh, go ahead, Stedko. Well, I would just like to say while this is conversations happening, um, Stedko mm -hmm. would like to see what other ships are in the sector. Right. ships. So you uh, go to a console and you pull up the relevant data, and uh, there's all of two ships that are in the area. One is the Umbriel, so I guess that really doesn't count. So maybe there's only one other ship in the area. Can you guess whose ship it is? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not Captain Archuleta, right? No, it's definitely not Bree. No. Um, I I'll give you a hint. You may have names. married him in the last session. <laughs> no, um, that's a great. Sir, rating. we don't have any uh, any allies nearby. Corn <laughs> is totally an ally. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> sir, may I detect from the tone of your voice that you are being <laughs> facetious? Yeah, uh, Cord's here. You know, we could ask the Undine for help. That's a good suggestion. Uh, Send... If I might interject for just one moment, that may not be the best idea, uh, Commander. If you will review the uh, shield harmonics of Undine vessels, you'll see that they, uh, they don't really react very well to isolic subspace weaponry. Oh. Well, we yeah. can... We can still but contact the Undine, let them know, and let them decide whether or not they want to help. Uh, what I mean by that, sir, is that uh, if they were ever struck by an isolated subspace weapon, it would probably destabilize subspace throughout the entire sector for an indeterminate period of time. Um, I would recommend that we actually advise the Undine to stay out of this area until this situation is resolved. Damn. All right. Um, Kiswick will task that to a comms officer unless we have someone available that's a comms officer. There's, you know, some red shirt takes that duty from you, no problem. Yeah. So do we assume that, I guess we assume from the, um, from the nature of this message that we know that the Sona are going to attempt to use that weapon like their intent is not in question is it well the intent is questionable on whether or not you believe the old man whether or not they intend to use them isolytic weapons are outlawed by the second kittimer accords possession of them is a crime jaro can you work with Jana to determine the evasive and offensive capabilities of this and program some macros into Umbriel and the shield in our station's evasive maneuvers? Maybe see if we can get the aardvark out to lend some kind of assistance if needed. We'll do what we can. Dodig, I need a complete report of the effect of isolytics on organics 
whether or not they detonate them, we need to be prepared. Well, this is potentially a crossover with myself and engineering, but I'm sure that uh, Lieutenant Jana and Mr. Terrell will agree that if an isolated subspace weapon is detonated near our ship, it has a potential to rupture our EPS conduits uh, in further internal isolated shocks. Um, this has the potential to destabilize the central nervous system of most uh, standard humanoids. Um, typically, it is instantly fatal. I was afraid you were going to say that. Get medical teams dispatched to emergency stations and tell them to stand by. This thing's going to be here in 24 hours. I want to be ready for it. And if I could make another suggestion, check the logs of the USS Voyager. They had to deal with extensive isolated radiation in their time in the Delta and made uh, significant gains towards shielding and structural integrity. I'll review those. Stadco, I need you to do the same thing with the uh, security teams. Have them dispatched and armed, ready to go. I don't know if the Sona are going to try and do any kind of boarding. It doesn't seem like it's in their MO, but just in case, I need everybody primed with any uh, Sona weaponry. I mean, sir, is there any way we could reverse that situation and attempt to board the Dreadnought? That's probably a good idea. Did, did the old man give us the designated coordinates for its arrival? Uh, out of character, uh, yes, he did. Meeting crew. All right, Hatea, let's get Umbriel prepped and have her sitting just outside those coordinates and uh, have everything hot by the time they arrive. You got it, sir. Um... This is probably a bad moment to bring it up, but there is one more thing we could discuss while everybody's here. Go ahead. And uh, Hatea looks very pointedly at Terrell and Jana, and says, well, you remember that AI that sort of helped us retake the station from the other AI? I was afraid you were going to bring that up. Go well, ahead. seems Terrell has called it Athena, and it's sort of taken to the name. And um, they've been listening this entire time. I thought fit to mention that just in case we wanted to tell it not to do that in the future. <sighs> How did you know it was listening? Well, it's actually very simple. And uh, she actually points behind Terrell and Jana. And uh, you two are just now noticing this. Uh, Dottig and, and Stetko and Kijwick. Um, you maybe noticed this a few seconds beforehand. But a hologram appears between the two of them. And uh, it is of a red-skinned woman with uh, flowing white hair, uh, unnaturally light blue eyes, uh, wearing what would traditionally be some form of leathers or some form of tunic. But uh, quote-unquote Athena just says, I mean, you don't have to give me away like that, Hatea. And Hatea just sort of shrugs. Normally, it would be inappropriate for you to eavesdrop on a briefing like this, Athena, but your skills are uniquely suited to several tasks that could be beneficial for us in the next day and would keep you alive as well as a side effect. Well, that's why I decided to listen in. I mean, what what's the uh, human expression? Two birds, one stone? I'm not familiar with that, but whatever works. It is. Sounds good to me. I mean, twice the meal. Thank you, Commander. Good thing. <laughs> just, just bring that up there. <clears throat> Athena, are you skilled in the arts of cybersecurity? Let me put it to you this way. Your security on the station, a Ferengi board on a Sunday could get through it. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Dothing's going to elbow Stetco in the ribs. <laughs> just... We, we can schedule the, the pride death match mm -hmm. later, mm -hmm. Commander. Mm -hmm. Athena, uh, please work with Jaro to determine any cybersecurity vulnerabilities in the incoming vessel. And if you have any ideas about how we can exploit them, let me know as soon as you can. Oh, well, I have already about a thousand suggestions I could give you, but uh, I, I just want one thing. Just, just one thing. 
Yes. I'd like a field commission. I hereby grant you the rank of Ensign. Sweet. Ensign. I love it. Wait a second. That means I have to report to him? And she looks deliberately at Terrell at this one. It was you that stated the demand, but not any delimiters about said demand. Mm. Oh, this is one of those organic things where you... Ah, uh, I see. I will be more clear in the future. That would behoove you greatly. Mm. Well, it's Re it's called a meritocracy. You have to prove that you're worth a higher rank. Yeah, like going through Starfleet Academy. And there's a moment where her eyes just sort of look distant and they sort of flash a few times. She says, all right, I did. I had a, it reminds me of another hologram I knew in another life. Board. <laughs> Ferengi board on a Sunday. Oh, you can read books. <laughs> I could also right, read personal everybody. logs, but I haven't. Let's cut the sass. In less than 24 hours, we're going to have danger on the horizon. I need everybody to be ready for it. And if that means we figure it out sooner and we're bored for a few hours, so be it. Dismissed. And uh, as everyone starts to filter out, uh, Hatea actually takes Dantic aside for a moment. What do you want? Well, um... And she sort of looks to make sure she's out of earshot of the captain and really anybody else. And she sort of leans in and says, do you think the, um, I mean, you, you did order captain to bed. Do you think he should be in charge at a time like this, especially after what just happened to him? I tell you, you want to take command. That's very ambitious. I like it. Oh, hell no. No, I do not want to be commanding whatever force we mount against the Sona. I'm just simply doing my job as a first officer. I think in times of crisis, Captain Kijwick would want to be left in command. I'll be monitoring him closely, and if he shows undue stress or fatigue, I will relieve him and place you in command. I wish I could say I would be happy if that were the case, but it is not. Well, the feeling is mutual. That's all, Doctor. Um, unless you had anything to let me know about. Um, you're late on your monthly physical? Again? No, I'm pretty sure I... Oh. Oh, you did my sister, not me. That's I what beg she your meant. Pardon? No, about, uh, you remember two weeks ago, uh, quote-unquote, I came into sick bay. Okay, right. no... I understand. Yeah, that was my sister going in my place as a prank. Right, and that's why I'm saying that you're like, you mean sister or no, I'm subdermal DNA scans and biorhythms indicated it wasn't you. Oh, I see. Okay, so we're actually on the same page. Okay, alright, I'm there. Sorry, doctor, it's been a little stressful recently. Commander, do I have to relieve you? I, maybe? Do you, do you think I need a psych eval? Um, do you want my candid opinion? You're going to give me one anyway. Correct. If you have to ask the question, then the answer is probably no. What is it the old earth doctors used to say? I find you sound of wind and limb. I don't even know how to... You know what? I'm just going to go, Doctor. And she just sort of turns and walks off uh, with everyone else. But... I mean, oh, go ahead. I mean, she wanted to talk to me. <laughs> All right. So, uh, we're actually going to now go to one of the uh, laboratories. Uh, where inside, we of course have Jana and Terrell. Uh, Athena is there as well. My only question is whether or not Stetko, if you want to be present for this little meeting as well. Yes. All right, Stetko, you are there as well. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So uh, the four of you are currently pouring through the data of the Dreadnought, searching for any vulnerabilities, searching for anything that could give you an edge in the coming battle. And we're going to handle this like an extended task. 
Um, specifically, what this is going to mean is that for this extended task, we are going to be also tracking time. So every single attempt at this extended task will be, we'll say, four hours of time. Um, so just keep that in mind as you move forward. Uh, the work track, and again, I'm typing all this out as I speak. The work track is going to be out of 14. The magnitude is going to be a 5. The resistance is going to be a 5. And the difficulty will start at a 5. Or no, the resistance is a 2, sorry. Uh, so you will more or less have to either complete this extended task uh, within the 24-hour time span. Or if you don't complete it in time, I'm only going to give you partial information here. Now, when it comes to uh, rolling and assisting, um, what I would say is that one person can do the main role. They can be assisted by one other person. However, the caveat to this is, and we're doing this a little bit differently than last season, every single attempt has to be a different support. So, for example, if it's Jana doing the role, Terrell can assist first, but then Terrell can assist immediately again. It would have to go to Athena or Stetko. But the third attempt, Terrell could come back and assist again, if that makes any sense. So, uh, really, it's just dependent on what angles you guys want to attack this sort of problem with, and we'll flavor the rules appropriately. Uh, listen, uh, everyone, uh, looking at this vessel, the, the wealth of technology that's available to us here, the way in which we might be able to integrate this into our own warp systems in order to avoid any kind of subspace degradation or even to reverse it, we could we could save the Hakonans and their entire world. I mean, they're, they're basically trapped from the rest of the Federation due to the subspace degradation around their world. We, we could cure ecological disasters. We have to take this ship as it stands. We can't destroy it. I agree. I think we should focus on the weapon itself and not the entire dreadnought. I think if we were able to take out the weapon somehow, we could still salvage the technology. Jaro, uh, opinions on that? or I thought there were rules against using future technology. Who are you? Are, are you a changeling? I'm just saying. You know, uh, it's one of these things. We're making a lot of assumptions here. One, we're making an assumption that this old man is benevolent. And that he's telling us the truth. Uh, we're making the assumption that as soon as these people appear, we're going to engage them. You know, it's it's like we're throwing them a surprise party, but with soap in a blanket. GM, would Stetka have been able to detect any kind of intent from the old man? From the old man, no. Okay. Anything at all? Nothing. So pretty much the entire time he was there, nothing. He was just a void. Mm -hmm. She kind of like keys a console. Well, you know, he couldn't have, he might not have been real at all. I didn't pick anything up from him. I, I don't know. I, I think we're I think we're assuming a fight and, you know, I, I'm normally not the guy that is going to turn away from a fight, but we're what we're going to be walking up to the biggest bully in the yard. And just because he came to our neighborhood, we're going to punch him. Well, I think it's more like we're going to give him the chance not to get punched. And if he doesn't take that opportunity, we're then we punch him. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna just take his big stick away from him. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, if if I appeared somewhere and somebody instantly, you know, took out my weaponry, I, you know, I I don't know. I don't know. I mean, and, and then there's also the whole rules about using future technology. Well, they're Maybe. using technology that is illegal in the Federation because of the damage it can cause. So we have to confiscate it at the very least. We don't have harm, harmful intent towards them, but we have to protect this area of, the, of space and if not the entire galaxy. Well, and, and I agree that we can, uh, you know, we can do so much good with this technology, but, you know, good intentions, you know. 
And uh, Athena actually speaks up at that and says, Actually, you know what? Terrell's making some sense here, but to sort of counter some of the points, last I can see in the logs, the Sona haven't really been messed with since 2378, 2379. There's a lot we don't know about their development, but based on the logs I'm seeing, the Enterprise E and Picard didn't exactly leave them on uh, speaking terms with us. I mean, the captain told us a course of action, and I'm going to follow that course of action. I'm just, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet. No, no, I, I find it interesting that you organics can have such differing opinions yet still work together. They're basically bringing a grenade launcher to a knife fight, and we just want them to put it down and talk. I don't think that's too much to ask. You're right, though, Jero. I mean, maybe I was just a little bit too eager to get my hands on that uh, the, that isolated subspace engine that they're using. Um, I, I appreciate that. I, if this is a really weird experience for me. Usually, I'm the one stopping you from doing stupid things. But you know, this is I like this dynamic. This is a, this is the interesting evolution of our friendship. Um. Okay. I I I just I don't know. I'm just worried. You know, and the other aspect of this is, do we need to make sure that all of the uh, warp fields are down when they appear because of the nature of the isolenic weaponry? It would really only become an issue if they attempted to detonate one of the weapons. Which is the first thing I would do if you try to take my toy. Athena, can you help us with the uh, warp core issue? Certainly, I can certainly if work the on time, that. Thank you. If the time comes, we'll need some qu quick action on that. Well, um, since we do want to try to disable this vessel, at least have a plan in place so that if worst comes to worst and we do have to dis disable them, uh, well, we don't we don't die. Um, what about targeting the power systems that supply energy to the weapon rather than actually trying to disable the weapon itself by uh, targeting the emitters, which might cause some kind of subspace cascade reaction. We could localize the power systems that are feeding energy into it and knock those out with targeted phaser shots. The Sona have, even in the 23rd century, had technology that far exceeded the Federation knowledge. So we'll just have to see how how their shields work, how strong they are in comparison. We really have no other information. At least that's a place to start. Yeah, I yeah. You know, point me point me in the direction. I'll help. All right. So it sounds like you guys are looking at the power systems first. Um for Terrell and Jana, if you guys try and do it, this would be an insight engineering. Stetko, if you're approaching it for more of a power dampening, power disruption side, uh, you would be an insight security. Uh, Athena would be insight anything because all of her disciplines are to three. So uh, she would um, more or less help you if you so wished. Uh, also, thank Star... you for the hydrate. I will do so. <laughs> Starship weapon systems? Um, yeah, I would say Starship weapon systems apply. Okay, so oh. there is uh, already three successes from Stetco. Need to see uh, two more in order for you to pass this. So who is going to assist on that? I think you just uh, volunteered. Be you. Uh, I probably would have spent momentum and determination on that, given, given that it's a difficulty five task, and I would have, uh, but uh, all right. Uh, so would Starship Construction apply here as well? Most definitely it would, yes. Insight Engineering, was it? Yep. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Well, I think what's going to happen is the first four hours, and I'll start keeping track of that in chat so there's a written record of it as well. Uh, let's see. So time, four out of 24. 
So for the first four hours, you all are pouring over the schematics. And it's that same sort of just wave after wave of technology that is far beyond your own and technology that makes only the barest bit of sense. So you're almost awestruck at sort of the level of, well, stuff that's on display here. It's one of those things where, for example, there's shield generators uh, easily comparable to what you have on Deep Space October, which October, even though it hasn't really gotten into a true fight, has some pretty damn beefy shields. Um, but that's all you really glean in your first four hours. Um, so you're, you're able to, again, attempt this, you know, a couple more times, um, but just be mindful of it being an extended task. Um, you may wish to spend momentum slash threat, um, in order to reduce the interval or buy some momentum moving forward. Yeah. Uh, so I think I'll take the next crack at it, uh, given okay. that I have miracle worker. And for me, would that be, oh, actually, it doesn't make, make a difference because my engineering and security are the same. So I'll spend determination using my value um, obsessed or dangerously obsessed with new technology mm -hmm. because I'm desperate to figure out a plan to actually disable this vessel so that we can capture it, regardless of Jaro's very wise suggestion that uh, we should exercise caution here. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a momentum to, redu uh, to reduce the interval and two okay. threat for an extra die. Okay. And I'll, and I'll assist with um, power systems? Yeah, I'll give it to you. Oh, the complication? Let's just say that I'm banking that for later. Well, that's three successes. Whew. We're not doing very well. No, apparently you've got groundskeeper luck. Yeah, so... I'm trying to think, do you have, you don't have cautious engineering, do you? No, but, um, yeah, and even the fact that I'm in engineering wouldn't, uh, would only bring the difficulty down by one. Right. I think what's going to happen then, unless you want to challenge a value here somehow to get another point of determination, I think it's just going to be one of those things where, another two hours pass and you're still not making any headway. Which, you know, I think is interesting. It's just that, you know, maybe the first six hours don't go well. You know, maybe again, you're just sort of overwhelmed and trying to figure out what's going on here. Uh, yeah. It is at this point, though, that uh, as you all continue to work at this, uh, we're actually going to switch over to uh, Kijwick in his ready room. Now, Kijwick, uh, you were initially ordered by Dottig to, you know, go sit in your, um, well, your room, like your actual room, get some bed rest. But then this whole Sona thing happened. Uh, so what are you up to uh, while the others are more or less studying away? Uh, Kijwick would have sent a priority one message to start lead command, informing them of the situation with any relevant tapes and schematics, as well as a request for backup uh, that would have been on a secure channel. Mm -hmm. And he's also taking Dr. Dodding's recommendation to heart and researching everything he can about isolytic shock, isolytic bursts, and isolytic reactions, ways to neutralize them, as well as any kind of plan to uh, mine the area or um, even flood the area of their arrival with chroniton particles to or anti chronotons to try and delay or even completely stop their arrival in our time. Hmm, interesting. Let's start with the Starfleet communique. So you send it out, you start doing your other work, and after about maybe not even an hour, uh, you get a beep on your console that the Flea Admiral herself is contacting you. This is Kijwick. Go ahead. All right. And uh, one question. Would you let her use the holographic displays in your office, or would this be on your personal uh, desktop computer? Uh, not a matter of let. If I receive a holographic signal, the Fleet Admiral is more than welcome to materialize in my ready room. 
Okay. You know, I figured, you know, they, they didn't really extend that courtesy on uh, Deep Space Nine. So I thought I'd give you the chance to say, nah, I just want to do voice only kind of a thing. <laughs> Don't look at my browser, yo. <laughs> exactly. All right, so appearing in the room with you uh, is Fleet Admiral Ignatrix, and for those who don't know her, she is, of course, the Fleet Admiral in charge of, well, the entire Sabine Expanse. Basically, she is uh, a certain Briarchuleta's boss's boss's boss, and for her to actually go out of her way like this, the only reason you know her to begin with is because she's the one that sent you the Umbriel, so for her to show up is kind of a big deal. So uh, the Admiral, uh, of course, in her uh, Admiral Blue, of all things, uh, with the stereotypical five dotted bar, sort of just looks around the office and says, hmm, looks different than I thought it would. Well, Captain Kiswick, uh, I read your report. Um, you believe this old man, as you put it? I believe the evaluation of the officers who look at the schematics that were provided by the old man. And given the urgency of the situation and the instability of isolytics, I did not want to waste time trying to guess about the man's motives. Hmm. Well, I can tell you that, unfortunately, the nearest ship we have in the area is the uh, USS Thunderchild. Unfortunately, the Thunderchild is still about three days out. So that is your earliest relief that I can get you. We are looking at the arrival of this weapon in less than 18 hours, Admiral. And I know. we cannot rely... No, oh, sorry, sorry I, I didn't mean to cut you off. You go ahead. We cannot rely on any Undyne assistance as their ships would also catalyze the isolytic reactions and render this area of space uh, uninhabitable and untraversable. Yes, uh, I was afraid of this scenario. Uh, Mr. Kiswick, I'd like you to take a look at your cargo manifest. Tell me, do you still have a cargo container Omicron 971? And Kiswick will bring up a pad and check the cargo manifest history. Uh, because you could use some momentum, give me a control command difficulty of zero. Any specialty on this? Um, Probably not. Yeah, I don't think so, unfortunately. Let's see. Um, star, star based security systems? You know what? I could give you that for this instance, yes. All right, three successes, which means you get three momentum. So what you see is that, yes, you do have a cargo container. You have no idea what the contents are, which is really odd because it's your job to know everything on your station. Apparently we do, but I'm not cleared to know what's inside it. Well, we basically, or rather we, I should say I, shipped you out that container a few months ago after I did some thinking in case the Borg decided to show up again, inside you will find uh, two transphasic torpedoes. Now, what you do with those transphasic torpedoes, I leave entirely up to you. However, if my words are not clear, I am authorizing you to use any and all force to present, prevent the Sona from using their isolytic doomsday device, as you put it. Understood, Admiral. We won't let you down. Good. See that it happens that way. And uh, with a pretty much little ceremony after that, her hologram just sort of shimmers out of existence. Uh, out of character. What's the name of our logistics officer? Uh, your logistics officer is... Uh, let me find him again. That would be... Uh, initially, I think I had him as uh, Chief Verlon. Oh, I thought it was... Or no, Verlon's the Dock Master. It has been a while. Uh, no, Dorset's, alternate. Dorset's, right. is, uh, Dorset. Dorset's the logistics guy. Um, Kizrik will just, on the same manifest, uh, tap that item and send a text communication to Dorset uh, to bring that to uh, the attention of Commander Stetko. Okay. 
And as you continue to sort of do plans for uh, mining the area and sort of basically putting into action a bunch of plans that might help you, uh, we're going to cut to the med bay, then we'll go back to the science lab. So uh, med bay, uh, let me clean up some tokens here. Uh, med bay Dotig is a little bit hectic right now. You have nurses and orderlies running this way and that, getting medical kits ready to go. Uh, the real question, though, is what are you doing about your experiments that you were running, Dotig? Um, if you have an idea of what those experiments are, I can certainly let you flavor them. But if not, I have the perfect experiment uh, for this instance. Well, now, now I'm intrigued, so I want you to tell me what, what experiment I've got running. Gotcha. So before the whole captain thing started, uh, you were looking into the ability of using biomimetic gel for a new purpose, basically regrowing a entire spine or another sort of organism, uh, almost like a certain um, doctor on uh, TNG did. I can't remember the name of the episode off Gen the top of my head. But genetronics. That's what it is. Yes. Basically, you're, you're doing some <laughs> genetronic experiments. And it's one of those things where you can certainly turn off the experiment and ignore it. But if you do, you're going to be down a good quantity of biomimetic gel. Yeah, and my experiment ruined. Exactly. Wow. So here's a question, GM. Conceivably, what could I do to salvage it? Well, uh, there are a few things you could do. You could put it in a stasis chamber, and theoretically that would freeze it, quote-unquote. Mm. Uh, another thing you could do is you could simply continue your duties and just sort of use every bit of free time you have to continue the experiment. Um, but that would kind of split your attention, as it were, so it would be difficult. A uh, third option that occurs to me is you could uh, maybe Nurse Chan tell them to do it. Or really any of your underlings to do it. Mm. <clears throat> you know, if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself. So I'm going to attempt to juggle my emergency duties in sick bay as well as this experiment. Okay, and this is going to be represented by a fitness and a medicine at a difficulty of two. Okay. But I guess since you are in sick bay, you do get that difficulty reduced to a difficulty of one. All right. And would my, um, <clears throat> my focus in neuroscience apply here? I'd give it to you. Here we go. All right. Hey, that's uh, two more momentum. So, yeah, for the time being, uh, you are indeed juggling quite well. And it is at this point that uh, we're going to actually shift back to the science lab to give the uh, brain squad a little bit of a uh, chance at uh, making things up. So, again, just as a reminder, you have not made any works progress so far. You have six intervals. Uh, no, you have each interval is four. You have something like four or five intervals left before the ship shows up. I, I don't even know what I'm looking at here. This is... God, I could use some Ractagino. Um... And Athena, actually, I think, as you say that, puts a, a drink next to you on a little saucer. It's not coffee, oh. though. It's uh, it's tea. That's, that's, that's very kind of you. Thank you for that. That... That's just immensely sweet. Thank you, Athena. Well, I, I can't have my second favorite organic falling asleep on me. I, I'm okay with being second favorite. Can I ask who the first is? And she deliberately does not answer. Okay. But uh, you are my favorite artificial life form. So good. Thank you. I appreciate it. What What is this exactly? I mean, it's tea, but... Uh, it's an Endorium blend. I'm told it, um, it's the equivalent of a uh, energy drink from Earth. Hmm. Oh, that that uh, that is very nice. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, that that that'll perk me right up. Thank you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Um, good. 
Uh, so I was thinking about what we could potentially do with, and uh, John, uh, uh, Jaro's pointing out um, some of the the power intakes on the on the ship, and say maybe potentially overloading these sections here. Well, we would have to worry about a cascade reaction in the actual isolytic converters, but uh, it certainly has merit. I mean, we could bear down on that as our next attempt at anal analyzing these schematics. All right. All right. So this is, again, going to be an insight engineering on... Uh, well, let me ask Terrell or Jana, which one are you leading? Uh, Jana. Okay. So, of course, Jana, this is, of course, again, an insight engineering or security. Uh, who's helping you on this one? Terrell, I'm guessing? Yeah, I'll help. I think that uh, Stedco is actually mechanically better suited to that, right? What's the role? Uh, inside security for Stedco. Those are my highest. Yeah. Do it. So I, I can. Okay. Right. Okay. You could so... even take the lead on this if you wanted. <clears throat> yeah, you have determination. That is true. She does have determination. Oh, okay. I guess I will. <laughs> Um, how many am I rolling? With well, that's the that's the really the question is if you spend determination, remember you do get the one auto crit to start off with, and then you got to spend the momentum or threat to get the more dice. And we do you have should, five. You I'll... should spend all the momentum <laughs> and roll four dice <laughs> along with your automatic two successes. I agree. Um, okay, I'm going to do it. Now, first I need to know what value are you tapping to use your determination? Um. Hmm. I will tap a star base as a home, a crew as a family. Sure, I can see that. You're trying to keep your family together. Yeah, I can see that working. Okay, I'm rolling four dice. Can I use Starship weapon systems again? You certainly may. All right, survey says, uh-oh. So that's five successes. You get what you need, but the complication arises. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to make that complication for later. So there's now two complications you have to worry about for later. Oh, dear. But, uh, Stetco, you have finally managed to get a little bit of a breakthrough here. You're starting to understand what you're seeing. Uh, if you could roll me seven challenge dice now to represent how much work you do. Wow. That is awesome. Wow. <laughs> I think that's literally the best, one of the best rolls we've seen on a challenge. That is impressive. Really? All right. Wait, well, wait, because we need it. So the resistance is only a two. So you actually end up doing 10 work. So what happens is Stetco, you've sort of been a little quieter than John and Terrell. You know, you've kind of stayed out of their little bickering as they work. Cause that's kind of how they operate a little bit um, to the point where you sort of get one of those epiphany moments where you're like, hold on a second. If we go here, here, and here, uh, and we do this, you know, X, Y, Z, this should lower the power uh, intake of the weapon kind of a thing. And it's one of those things that when you point it out, John and Terrell, you both sort of see this and go, oh, yeah, it could work. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you, you have made an actual breakthrough. Uh, so the resistance has gone down. Uh, and you also are going to get a new tidbit about the Dreadnought. So the Dreadnought has the ability that every time it loses power, uh, it can roll a challenge die. And if it rolls an effect, uh, it basically does not lose that point of power. So basically it has some sort of fancy secondary reactor slash specialized EPS conduit is what that means. Well, so we it's... have to target that. We have to target that backup. Yes, the redundant EPS manifolds are probably going to be a challenge to uh, to disable, but they would be necessary. Hmm. 
Jaro, any further observations that you want to apply to the situation, or should you just continue working on this problem? I mean, it's going to be interesting when it comes around. Uh, I, I, that was that was some good work, Stepka. Uh, indeed, Lieutenant Commander, I'm thoroughly impressed. Thanks, guys. I'm going to have a rectogenome myself, actually. Athena's already there handing you a cup of tea. Just like you turn around and she's just already handing it to you. Uh, thank you. She just sort of nods at you. And uh, as she does so, Athena sort of looks at everybody's display and goes, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna take the lead here. I'm going to see if I can figure out a way to get into their systems because if we can get into their computer systems, well, if I can get into their computer systems, maybe we won't have to shoot a single shot. Be my guest. You're the station, after all. <clears throat> all right. So, uh, to Stetco. Oh, go ahead. Keswick to Stetco. Yes, sir. I'm here. It's been six hours. How are you guys doing? Well, we just had a breakthrough. Uh, investigating more. Seem to have a little more intel than we thought based on these super advanced plans. But Athena is hopefully working her magic now. I just got off a call with the fleet admiral. And she has endorsed every option. Under no circumstances can we allow isolytics to be detonated in this part of space or any other. I sort of Omega protocol. Right. Isn't that what it's called, guys? <laughs> yep. Well, Omega is Omega. <laughs> I don't think there's actually a protocol against isolytic specifically. The Omega directive is like when you can do anything to get, stop it. That's oh, yeah. I mean, if, yeah, if that's what you mean, then yeah, it is sort of on that yeah. same level. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get there um, when we get there. If we detect any of those particles on this ship, then yes, we will go to the directive. Uh, for the time being, the prime directive is still in play as needed. All right. Well, uh, what do we have in our pockets, sir? Any good news? Anything that you guys can come up with from any database that we have access to? We need all the big brains on this one and the big guns. Keswick out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, uh, Aaron, if you would do me the honor of rolling for Athena in this instance. I would um, love to. She is going to be rolling a uh, insight and it doesn't really matter what uh, discipline, but insight engineering here. Uh, she does have a focus, and I'm going to give you one point of threat, so she's rolling three dice. All right. And then either Jana, Terrell, or Stetko, you may assist her. Just remember, it's just one of you. Go ahead, Jana. That's her second favorite organic. And I think uh, she... Yeah, so I think what happens is because she only got one success there. Uh, so that's only two successes, unfortunately. So, you know, it's not characteristic to see an AI or a hologram like this really show emotion. But Athena seems to be a little bit more emotive than your standard. And she almost kind of swears and goes, God damn it. No, that. OK, um, I'm not going to be able to get an easy. This this isn't going to be one of those situations where you send me over and I just take over their systems and everything's hunky dory. They're using, I, I don't even know what to call it. I mean, we obviously we have our current computer technology. This is like an extension of that. I, I don't, John what, what, what do you make of this? And she sort of shows it on your consoles and it's escaping the top of my head. What current quote unquote computers are based on. But it's somewhere in the neighborhood of, again, 300, 200, 200, 300 years ahead of current computer technology. Almost kind of the difference between TOS era and TNG era computers. I'm not surprised you don't understand what this is. I, I don't even know what I'm looking at here. It's 
it's like comparing duotronic circuitry tree to I don't know cryo neural gel packs. Right. That's that's what I was thinking, but I I don't even know how I would even begin to operate on that such a system. Like, how would that work? Oh. Oh. Um. I just thought of something. You're not gonna like it. Well, don't keep us in suspense. Well, I, I thought that's an organic thing where you just sort of pause and. Sorry. Um, Go ahead. You know how our current computer core is using subspace technology to work faster than light, correct? Yes. Okay. Well, if the isolytic weapon is fired, it disrupts all subspace in an area. See where I'm going with this? Mm-hmm. Which means that once they fire that weapon, I'm useless. Well, at least we know. Is it, it just gets better and better. Well, the, the task at hand is to keep them from firing it. <clears throat> and as we're going to shift away, actually, back to Medbay, because I think uh, Dottig is the momentum generator for this session. So, Dottig, huh? at this point, you've more or less gotten your orderlies and underlings <clears throat> in order. Everybody's already standing by at emergency positions, ready for what's coming to you. However, it is as you sort of go in to check on your experiment that um, there's a problem. And that problem is, is that the organ you were, quote unquote, replicating is no longer in the glass container where it was originally located. I think we'll stick his head out uh, to Nurse Chan. Um, Nurse Chan, you haven't seen a spinal cord around here anywhere. Uh, sp what kind of spinal cord, sir? Can you be more specific? A Klingon one? An Andorian one? A uh, uh, human. Um, no, I, I can't say I've seen a human one recently. Well, he's going to grab a tricorder and start scanning for uh, that uh, that biomatter. Right, I just want to. I just want to know what spinal cord she has seen recently. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, if you want to do a uh, reason medicine for me here, uh, difficulty <clears throat> of one. All right, one success is all you need. So it's one of those things where um, you're sort of going around sick bay, running your scans. And you eventually arrive in sort of the stasis area uh, where it's not quite next door to the experimental lab, but it is in the general vicinity. And as you walk in, you sort of look around. You see, of course, the isolation rooms, the quarantine sort of airlock things that let you in and out of quarantine. And then on the bio bed, right before uh, you get into the the stasis chamber, there's the spine. It's just sitting there as if someone had put it there deliberately. Uh, well, first I want to run a scan to see if it's still viable. Um, because if somebody's ruined my experiment, then there's going to be repercussions. Okay. Go ahead and give me another reason medicine difficulty of one. Yeah, right. Reason. Survey says another one success. Yeah, actually, it's um, it's complete, which shouldn't be the case. It should have had another four hours to grow. Huh. That is. Strange. Um, all right, I want I want to try one more thing. I want to perform a, a sort of invasive scan mm -hmm. on the spine to determine what accelerated the growth rate, if anything. All right. So that I'm going to give it to you free as you yeah. run this more invasive scan. 
uh, what happens is you sort of know the uh, spurs that are on the spine, at least in a typical human one, where they kind of come off the back. Mm -hmm. um, those spurs begin to elongate and form into actual, like, legs. And the spine creature leaps oh, no. at the window between you and it and just clangs against it. And it just screeches down that glass. So it's in like the isolation lab, right? Uh huh. Awesome. It's gonna tap his combat jet. Uh, computer, erect a level ten force field around the isolation lab. And there's kind of and, that sound as it activates. And he's gonna tap his for And I guess Stacko would probably hear this. Security to sick bay. On my way. All right. So uh, let's actually continue the scene because I find it funny. So Stetco, uh, you arrive with a security team uh, a couple minutes later. And yeah, by this point, the spine creature uh, is more or less doing just ramming against that glass again and again and again um, oh until it just it's not cracking the glass, but you're starting to worry about, you know, maybe something bad happening. So tag. I, I know how it looks. Please hold off on any Mary Shelley references for the time being. Uh, this is an experiment I've been running. And we seem to have hit some uh, snags yeah i'll say what is this well it's a spine spines are supposed to be inside bodies yes it's um however this one is clearly locomotive i can see that how did it become that way is it dangerous and can i just transport it off the station um i don't know probably I would rather you didn't. You better start talking and tell me why not or I'm going to. Because this potentially could be a new form of life. <sighs> so what I need for you to do is go and find a broom or a stick or something and sort of shoo it into a stasis chamber so that um, I can flash freeze it. No, this is your sick bay. You know where all the closets are. Go get, you go do that. Well, maybe I'll just go and find a uh, bored Ferengi teenager to do your job for you since that's apparently, but that's not going to get me what I want, is it? I'm about to walk in there and stun this thing. Mm -hmm. Hey, stunning is fine. Just don't vaporize it. I want it in a stasis chamber. <sighs> okay, so sh 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 she's going to try and stun it. Don't okay. uh, just... All, All right. right. So this is going to be a uh, control security. Uh, difficulty of two, please. And we don't have any momentum, right? Nope. And it is a difficulty of two. Great. Whatever. Um, can I do games of chance? This is not a game of focus. chance, Watney. No. That's my focus. No, this, this is, is a game? not a game of chance. <laughs> um, oh, energy based small arms technology. Yes, that will apply. Okay. I've always just wanted to use games of chance. So. Okay, well, with uh four successes, you get two momentum. Yeah, go ahead and roll me eight challenge dice, please. Only one? Eight. Eight. Not A. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to spend two threat to make a complication that Stetco, you walk inside, you line up your shot, you fire with the phaser, you vaporize it. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, with that much damage, what happened was you did five or more. So it was a non-lethal injury. It only had six stress, so you did more stress than it had. So that's another injury. So you inadvertently, even with stun, 
basically just murdered this thing. She so, kind of turns the phaser up. It um, wasn't really the result I was looking for. Well, that wasn't the result I was hoping for either. Apparently it was weaker than I thought. I, clearly. Well, I mean... Since you vaporized it, can you just sweep it up? You know what? Never mind. You're busy. I'll get one of my nurses to sweep up this experiment that potentially... I mean, I have no idea how this happened. It... You know what? Why don't you get someone else to do your dirty work next time? Huh? Mm. Well... I suppose next time that I need something stunned instead of vaporized, I probably will. <laughs> well, next time, why don't you make sure your experiment doesn't become sapient and destructive in your own sick bay? Oh, I'm fairly certain it wasn't sapient at all. As a matter oh, of so fact, you're I, just I... a jackass. And Dati will actually crack a huge smile. And say, Finally. She gets it. Seko will leave to go attend <laughs> to more important things. <laughs> and as she does, he will just sort of sing song. He call after her. Thank you, Lieutenant Commander. She will flip him off. You may have one momentum for flipping him off. All right, so we're going to go back to the science lab. Uh, Stetko is not present for this because she got called away to sick bay. but uh, John and Terrell and Athena, uh, as a reminder, you've got 10 hours before the Sona ship is supposedly here. You've got four more breakthroughs you need to get through. Fishwick is going to enter the science lab. He's right. been too fidgety in his ready room. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Captain. How's everything going, Lieutenant? Less than ideal. That would be an apt descriptor, yes. It's not. Be silent about it. Tell me what's up. Quite frankly, sir, this technology is beyond any of us, including Athena. We're barely scratching the surface of the rudimentary elements that underlie the power systems that we would need to disable in order to take out their weapon before they can use it. We're not making much headway. All right. Let's change our approach then. If we can't take out the weapon before they can use it, can we stop them from arriving in our timeline? Can we create some kind of area effect around their intended coordinates that would completely knock out their systems on a scale that wouldn't matter what time they're from. Hmm. Well, as we understand it, they're making some kind of jump through the manipulation of subspace. If we were to create some kind of localized subspace distortion field, we might in fact be able to prevent them from arriving at all. I mean, that's at least something we can look at by reorienting our focus onto the, the isolated packets that they're using to affect their transport. That's an ingenious idea, sir. Thank you. You think we might be able to reroute them somewhere more comfortable, like the heart of a sun? That was exactly what I was going to think of. Maybe a black hole, one or the other. It's all good. Let's get to work on that. Yes, sir. All right. So now uh, you may have another attempt at the extended task. Uh, Kijwick is available for either the full roll or the assist roll now. Um. I was going to hope that conversation could suffice as uh, using my veteran to give him determination. Yeah. So yeah, you can give Jana uh, your determination. Go ahead and roll me a challenge die to see if you get yours back. Unfortunately, don't get it back. But now, Jana, you've got determination again. 
All right, uh, then I'll attempt the task by using the determination and two momentum. Okay. And uh, who would be assisting me there? Would the captain be assisting me with uh, presence command as a direct task? Would he be? I think that would that would apply because doesn't Keswick have advisor? He does yeah. not. Need to get you advisor. That's number one. We got to get you advisor in the future. Need to level up, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. But yeah, I would say if Kishwick's helping you with the presence command, if your good buddy Terrell's assisting you, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, uh, you already have uh, four successes on the board. So it's just really whoever's assisting you gives you momentum or not. All right, Captain. Uh yeah. So presence command for Kishwick. Right, and it's just one dice, right? Correct. All right, so you don't get any additional momentum, but you do succeed. So, Jana, go ahead and give me six challenge dice, please. All right, and with eight, uh, you actually think you might have something going here. Uh, as you're looking at the data, you think uh, you might be able to perhaps bounce the Sona ship away from the initial coordinates. However, the problem here is that if you do bounce it away, and actually now that I think about it, that's actually enough to complete the extended task because you have Miracle Worker. So yeah, you actually do four, four breakthroughs there. So the entire extended task is done. Um, so as I was saying, if you bounce it away, the problem is, is that you would risk destabilizing the quantum singularity that leads to fluidic space. So it's kind of a, you know, do I do it or do I do I not do it kind of a thing. Um, almost like uh, how DS9, some of the things they were doing, if they didn't do it properly, it would destabilize the wormhole. Kind of the same situation here where you have to sort of weigh the, the positives and negatives. The other thing you get for completing the extended task is the following information. Um, I've already told you about the power systems of the weapon, uh, but now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the ship itself. Um, it has some form of advanced ablative armor. And when I say advanced ablative armor, I mean the same kind of ablative armor that uh, Admiral Janeway brought back to current time Janeway. So it has quite a lot of resistance. So that's one tidbit. The other tidbit you get is that its shields are far in advance of what you were expecting, even already expecting advanced shielding. So getting through its shields probably isn't going to happen unless you bring the full firepower of Deep Space October on it. Oh, and uh, the other thing that you notice, all things considered, its power reactor isn't as great as everything else, but... Even then, it's still a very sizable reactor comparable to DSO. What's its uh, long-range weapons radius, and does it have short-range weapons? Uh, it has, yes, I can tell you that. It has both phaser arrays and isolytic arrays, so it can fire at medium range effectively. Uh, it also, now that you did get a success here, you see that it has isolytic torpedoes, which uh, they can use at an optimum of long range. But they give us momentum when they fire them, right? Because we give you threat. When we fire <laughs> no, them. I have to spend threat for them to fire them. <laughs> Great. You're just arming up the... Don't, don't give them any more threat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fun. Um, go ahead. I, I think you had more questions. Uh, no, I think that pretty much covers just how screwed we are. Okay. I did actually have uh, one more direction then um with what we know of these transphaser torpedoes can we run scenarios against these schematics to see how likely those would be in affecting a defense so that would involve you telling somebody about the transphasic torpedoes which you we haven't did. yet but that person's not here right oh Stetco is supposed to be coming back, though, right? Eventually, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Kiswick to Stetco. You're muted, Watney. Go ahead, sir. I'm just not leaving sick bay. <laughs> uh, I will meet up with you. I need to talk to you about 
a message that I sent. Have you checked your messages? Has Dorset gotten in touch with you? Has he? Uh, he has not yet, but I figure let's actually do a scene in the armory real quick, and then okay. we'll take our break. Okay. So Stetko, uh, Dorset, and the captain, you all meet up in the armory to discuss, well, a transphasic torpedo. Does Dorset have the payload with him? Up to Dorset, I suppose. Okay. <sighs> Commander, <Right. clears throat> Lieutenant, thank you for meeting me here. In addition to the Admiral's request that we make sure this place stays free of any subspace destruction, we've got two transphasic torpedoes on board. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with these specs, but you've got a couple of hours to figure that out. And then I need scenarios run against the schematics of what we know of the ship coming in to see if we can these torpedoes will penetrate their shields in their hull. Well, I'll hand wave how they got on board. I did too. I mean, don't look at me. This was above my pay grade. So kind of like take a look at them. These are extremely dangerous, especially in the wrong hands. Yes, and well, Captain, that's if I can... Why we have them. If I could point this out, the detonators are pre-installed. These torpedoes are active. Let's not worry about how they got here or why. We have them. They're in our hands, and we may need to call on them to defend this region of space. Well, I can't say that we... I can't say with any regard for the safety of the Umbriel that we should fit them on that vessel. But why don't we see about a smaller vehicle and um, I know a pilot. I think uh, we're thinking of the same person. A, a runabout fitted with a modified torpedo launcher should be able to accommodate these. Is a runabout as invasive as it needs to be against superior technology? Depends what on the pilot. Thinking? Instead of a runabout, do you have a better vehicle in mind? Um, if Watney knew anything about... <laughs> I could give you a hint, Little Watney. tiny ships. I could give yeah, you a hint, what, but it, it would yeah, be a yeah, roll. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Give me a uh, reason security or a reason con difficulty of one. Okay. Hmm. Security. Challenge of value. Challenge of value. She'll need that to fire the torpedoes. In yeah, I was going to say the torpedoes hour, so. are kind of important. Um. I don't think I have a focus. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think so in this instance. Okay. Interesting. I'm gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna take the two thread on that. God. So, uh, Stetko, you uh, you remember that race we did uh, in season one where a quote unquote the Stig character was using a souped up worker bee. You still have that vehicle somewhere on DSO. You don't know where. Terrell might, though. I think we let the pilot pick his own ship. What do you say? Jaro would know best. But I need those scenarios run an hour before those things get here. I'll have him to you in two. Okay. And Kiswick will exit the armory. All right. And with that, we're going to take our 10-minute uh, break. So stick around. We'll be back in 10.
you know, isolytic weaponry, could we potentially trigger a more severe isolytic reaction? That's the point of the that's the point of the scenarios that Stedco was ordered to run. Mm. Just so you know, know you guys are live on street you guys are here audible on stream again. Just so you know. Hey everybody. This is what happens behind the scenes. Hello everybody. We get we get together in butt heads to try and hash out what our characters should already know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was double tasking, so. <laughs> All right, so just uh, just to sort of summarize for the stream and to give you guys stats for things. So the Umbriel is on station. You guys can put it anywhere on this map. You have Cord Ship. You can put it anywhere on this map. The current location where the Dreadnought's going to appear is that pink circle. It will appear in that hex. Um, what you know is that if you were to try and bounce it, um, it will appear not on this map, but the caveat to that is, is that the fluidic gate may destabilize. 
if you do that. Um, other thing I need to tell you is the stats for the transphasic torpedo. So the transphasic torpedo will do approximately five plus the security score of whatever fires it. So if, for example, the Umbriel is to fire uh, the transphasic torpedo, I believe the Umbriel has a security score of two, which means you would be rolling seven challenge dice. Now, the trade-off to that is, is if you are able to score a breach with the transphasic torpedo, it does double the breaches. So to put it in perspective, a normal photon or normal normal quantum, if you get a breach, you end up doing two breaches. Well, with a transphasic, if you get one breach, you end up doing three breaches. And just so we know, how much threat do you get for a transphasic? Uh, to fire any torpedo, you have to give me at least one threat. If you want to fire a spread of torpedoes, it's three threat. Uh, that doesn't change. Nice. Great. You could have been like, for transphasics, it's 10 threat. Be like, ah. <laughs> Let's just say that uh, your idea that uh, firing transphasics might cause problems, that's the only hint I'll give you. Cool. The the state the station has the station has a level of shielding over it, does it not? It does. Uh, Kijwick would like to order the orientation of the station so that the shielding is between the rest of the station and the incoming vessel. All right, noted. So I guess the real question here is I need to get a little uh, little worker bee here. Uh, where are, and I'll just use the Valkyrie for this. Uh, oh, what's Terrell. the security of a worker bee? Uh, the security of a worker bee is a grand total of a zero. The worker bee has no weapons. Then we're probably going to use the Valkyrie instead. Okay. So the Valkyrie has a security of a two, which is actually kind of nice. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I think you have control over the little Valkyrie there. Uh, where would you like to park it there, Terrell? Uh, Terrell is basically in continuous motion mm. around the pink circle. Because okay. he figures he has to be moving to potentially be able to dodge. Okay. All right. All right he, is, he is basically trying to get in as close as he can. Okay. All right, so before any of this kicks off, is there any uh, last-minute things you want to change? Any last-minute bits of uh, pre-game talk, hype-up speech, anything along those lines? This is your chance. What, are you muted? <laughs> I said, come on, Captain, give us something. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me just pull an unwritten speech out of my my webbed fingers here. Scrum, mm. time to scrum. scrum. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's not talk about scrum. <laughs> <laughs> let's do this. All right, everybody. In less than an hour, we're going to be tangling with quite possibly one of the worst kind of weapons that any of us have ever faced in our lives or careers. And by the way, this is Kiswick to all hands. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just saying that. Um, I want you to know that I have the fullest confidence in this crew to execute all of the procedures that we have laid out in the last 24 hours. We wouldn't be here today if you hadn't gotten us through everything else that we've gone through. Stay at your posts, keep your heads up, follow commands. We will get through this. Let's get it done. All right. And Right on time as the music surges, even though we can't actually play music because DMCA. It is at this point that all of you sort of direct your attention to that pink circle area of space. Unless, let me just do one last check. Are you going to displace it or are you just going to let it show up? 
I don't think it's worth the risk, and it's going um, to be further away from us. Yeah. Let's let's take a minor segue to talk about the uh, the scenarios that the captain had asked be run. Sure. Would have been available to him. So, uh, what I would say is, uh, let's have Stetco run me a insight security difficulty of zero. And uh, I will flavor the amount of uh, information I give you based on what she learns. Do you want to take a momentum for that? Do I? Yes. Okay, so you'll probably get it back. You have one. Okay. <laughs> Insight security. Roll three. Don't roll complications. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't think I have a focus. I think you do. <laughs> or do I? Yeah. yeah for for science. When the DM says you do, <laughs> you do. Okay. Take it back later. All right. Hey, that's uh that's three nice. successes. Three so that's momentum. three momentum you get. And uh what you learn is that let's just say if a transphasic torpedo hits the isolytic weaponry, I'm going to roll a challenge die. And if I roll an effect, bad things happen. Beh. <laughs> that being said in this likely or unlikely event of bad things happening does the transphasic torpedo do the job of disabling or destroying the vessel i mean it still does i mean you still would roll the damage for the torpedo uh okay. but it it would still act like a torpedo yes so it it it, it based on these scenarios it the ablative armor does not inhibit the toy doesn't just bounce off and fly away or anything like that. I mean, potentially it still could because, and this is kind of, I guess, our really our second real ship combat in DSO. Um, you have to remember that everything has innate resistance. Um, yeah. For example, for the Umbriel, uh, the Umbriel has, I don't believe it has a blade of armor. Um, so the Umbriel only has a resistance of five. Um, that's the scale of the Umbriel. DSO, on the other hand, is a scale 12, uh, which means that it has 12 resistance. And what you would know about the Dreadnought is that it has also 12 resistance. Okay. So in order to do any damage to it, you have to get rid of 6, or no, sorry, you have to get rid of 12 resistance before you even put a single point of damage on them. Which means you're going to be having to spend for piercing uh, with momentum and or threat in order to get through it. All right. Anybody who is not on Umbriel should be an ops and um, probably need a backup comms team to handle comms traffic between any of the vessels that we have uh, armed for this occasion um, with Umbriel on a priority line on speakers. Okay. So uh, with that understanding in mind, uh, we are going to sort of drop the ball as it were that almost in a swirling vortex of white and purple energy uh, vomits forth a tr tremendous ship uh, that looks almost similar to a Batleth if it was designed by the Sona, where again it has those sweeping curves, flat in general and uh, great archways and as it enters into normal space uh, I need Terrell I need you to roll me a daring and a con Difficulty of three to see if you are able to get into their shield before it raises. Alrighty, let's, uh, you know what? We're probably going to spend some momentum for this. Um, let's go ahead and use up the momentum that's there. Okay. Sure, you don't want to use one threat so you can re roll a die. Oh, using yeah. Gold? Let's do one threat and two momentum. That's right. Okay. And control con, daring con, or daring, same thing. Sorry. And uh, I have uh, precise uh, precision maneuvering. Which would lower the difficulty, if I remember it correctly. Correct. R lowers it by one. All right. So it's a difficulty of two. And I'm using four total dice. <laughs> there right, you go. Well, there you go. That's the two you need. I'm so gonna, I'll re-roll one of them. Okay. Uh, just on the chance of us getting some some stuff. And don't forget your challenge die. Yeah, I'll do that. No, nothing there. 
And he gets and a I threat. Get nice. So what I'm going to say is, yes, Terrell, you are able to zip inside the shield bubble of the Dreadnought. However, uh, I am going to spend that two threat you just gave me to create the complication that the Sona know you're there, specifically because you can see them trying to attempt to lock weapons on you immediately. All right. But before we actually kick things off, Kijwick, do you want to try the route of peace? Or does Cord want to kamikaze his way in? What What's the opening quote-unquote volley here before we go into full combat? Uh, it would be an open comm line <clears throat> from Kijwick to, uh, Kijwick to the Sona vessel. Uh, and if cord had any notions of blitzkrieging this thing they would have been incumbent on whether or not diplomacy succeeds or fails in this communication okay open a channel this is captain kiswick of the federation starbase deep space october as you can tell we knew you were coming we know that you may be equipped with isolytic weapons, and as that, we have taken great pains to counteract them and counteract you. I've got 10,000 quantum torpedoes targeted on your location, and that's not all. I await your reply. And there's that silence, that uneasy silence, as everybody sort of watches the comms to see if there's been any sort of reply. And I think the only reply you get is that the Dreadnought begins targeting Deep Space October. And with that, that we go into full initiative order. Remember, it is ally, enemy, ally. And uh, just to keep things fair... Uh, I am going to limit both sides to only five turns per round. Um, so what that means is that you can spread those five turns across the Umbriel, Cord Ship, the Valkyrie, Deep Space October. Uh, the Sona will only have five actions on its own, but you can spend those five actions in every way you wish. Just remember that if you try to do the same action back-to-back -back on the same ship, it does get more difficult. So... For the good guys. What are the good guys doing first? I think uh, it's on you, Jero. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> All right. the most precarious position. All right. Have so uh, Jaro's going to swing into the swing into the ship and uh, basically uh, uh, open fire. Okay. Uh, I assume I can do like an aim or something of that nature. Actually, no, because this is starship combat. You cannot okay. aim. Um, right. But what you can do uh, is fire that torpedo you've got on your craft. Mm -hmm. And what that's going to be is that would be a control security difficulty of three. I do get one threat for you firing it. Um, oh, you're going to get some more. It's not just not like he doesn't have any already. So, And let me put it to you this way. Um, I'm going to let it happen that you are inside their shield bubble, so you are going to take off some of their resistance, but there's still a lot of resistance on the table. So you may mm -hmm. wish to spend for piercing. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and use my determination uh, with, uh, you know, never back down mm -hmm. is the value that we're going to use. And uh, you're going to get a bunch of threat. Uh, you're going to get four threat? No, five threat, right? Yeah, that's how that works. So you're going to get five threat. Okay. And that's a daring... What? Nope, control security, difficulty oh. of three. <laughs> control security. And that's four dice. And I have a focus. And two successes already. All right. Well, that is a significant number of successes. That is seven total successes, which means you have four momentum gained from that roll. So mm -hmm. yeah, as I said, this is going to be seven challenge dice since you're firing it from the Valkyrie. And if I throw all four momentum at piercing? Uh, if you throw all four momentum at piercing, that will get rid of eight resistance. Oh, we have five total. 
You do. So let's just use let's just use all five for piercing. Okay. So you Oh are no, taking... do four for piercing because I want the one for a reroll on zeros. Okay. And that's how many challenge dice? Seven. Sorry. Seven. Not seventy. <laughs> seventy would be good. Okay. And I'm not re-rolling anything. All right. So what I would say is that you fire the torpedo out and it does impact uh, somewhere along the sort of left wing of the craft. And when it hits, you are indeed able to cause a number of breaches. So if you would roll me a uh, three system hit, please. Remember, that is a uh, macro that should be available to you uh, in the player section. That's a lot of structure. That is indeed a lot of structure. All right. So what I'm going to say then is the Sona Dreadnought, the entire left wing, or did I say right <laughs> wing? Whichever wing you hit, uh, there's a cascading chain of explosions along its length. And you guys see that not only are bulkheads being blown out into space, but also Sona and uh, other life forms as well. Uh, the net result is you are able to score a number of breaches on it, uh, three in particular. Um, however, uh, the craft is large enough that even with its wings somewhat crippled, uh, it is still very much standing at the end of this. All right. So Charles took my best shot. Uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jaro, you're still the within the uh, you're still within the shield, so you can't exactly just break out at this point. Oh, that's true. <laughs> so uh, keep that in mind. You get to skim their hull for a while while you uh, while you dodge blasts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I have an important question: Does anyone have quick to action as a talent? I think Stetco does. Do I? As a no. Okay. Okay. In that case, it is going to be the Dreadnought's turn, and the Dreadnought is indeed going to open fire on Deep Space October. Now, I have all this threat that I've been graciously granted by my players, so <laughs> I'm going to spend three threat here to give them two additional dice. Which they don't even really need. So, uh, the Isolytic Array is what we're looking at here, so that is... One, two, three, four, five. So that is 18 total damage uh, done to Deep Space October. Remember, you do have 12 resistance. So you take eight damage to your shields as the isolytic rays open up uh, and fire a almost a multicolored prismatic beam at DSO. And it is devastating. Um, because I rolled five or more damage, we do have a breach. Uh, DSO, your weapons are temporarily offline. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that is Great. all the Sona are going to do. It is now the uh, the allies' turn. So, Umbriel, Core, DSO. All it would take is a minor action to restore them, right? So anyone Correct. in their turn can bring them back online. Correct. I guess we have to decide like where everyone is, right? Well, we've got Umbriel right in front of us, cord ship off to the uh, port. We're between us and them. Um... Well, that, that's a good point um, that Watney uh, said is, Who's on DSO and who is on the Umbriel? Yeah, is anyone actually on the Umbriel or is it just Hatea out there? I think I think Stedco would probably be on the Umbriel. Okay. In all likelihood, neither the Umbriel nor Cord ship have any ability to actually damage that vessel unless you dump about six points of momentum into piercing. Mm -hmm. Or you ram it. So we're going to need... Then. Even then, you'd be negligible. Okay, so we can we can either spend a turn or a minor action to bring the weapons back online, mm -hmm. and then either scan for weaknesses or fire. That would be an optimum course of action. Yeah, just trying to 
calculate yep. the diminishing returns on scanning for weaknesses or just firing. Uh, if if Dottie scanned for weaknesses, then uh, spent two momentum to retain the initiative, uh, depending on the success of his rolls, mm. we could then fire and with the increase optimize it. Yeah, with with the piercing added to the attack. This is part of the game. Um, so Dottie, it John, sounds like you're doing some scanning for weakness. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that I was, was going to get theatrical about it. Oh, well, my, my bad. My bad. Um, yeah. I guess that would be a control science. Yep. Control and... science difficulty of two in this instance, because this is not a close range. Yep. Uh, but DSO will assist you with a sensor security. I am. Hopefully this will bear fruit for us, but I'm going to spend that point of momentum. Okay. And Ishwick uh, would uh, would call up Jana and tell him to restore weapons. If it's possible. I think it would actually be Dottig can do the minor to restore weapons. So Any? Hmm. maybe he, yeah, mm -hmm. it's literally anybody can do it as a minor action. It's only once you actually have to go and repair it the breach itself yeah. that you need engineering for. All yeah, right. I think as long as as long as the subsystem is just initially damaged by a breach and doesn't have the damaged or disabled condition, then it correct. Then it, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, someone want to get uh, DSO real quick? Uh, sensor what? security for the ship or for the I station? Got it. Sensors security. Focus, yes. For, for some marbles. Survey says, hey, Ooh. that's another two successes. Very nice. Marbles. So yeah, what I would tell you is, Datig, you know, you're not in engineering or security sort, sort, but you just sort of look at where Terrell shot and you think, yeah, it's probably a good place to aim your attacks. Damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. Um, and can I take the minor action to repair the um, repair the weapons? You certainly may. Uh, now, just what, know what, that it, that doesn't get rid of the breach, but it does no. bring them back online. Right. And can we spend two momentum to retain the initiative and fire? You certainly may. My only question is, who's doing the actual firing act? I feel like uh, you know I feel what like the captain. Yeah, Kishwick's yeah. going to be on phasers for this one. Okay. So what you need to know then is for every D20 you buy for this attack, you get one more challenge die to roll here. And because and this is from Scan to Weakness, you also get piercing two, which means every effect you roll is two resistance off. Okay. Buying challenge die is spending momentum to do that. Uh, the piercing two you get just by default. You don't have to spend anything extra to get it. It's only the additional challenge die that you have to do D20s for. So and... Two extra dice? Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm trying to calculate, do I give up momentum for this? This is part of the rules where I'm a little hazy on. Oh, I see yeah. what you're saying now. Sorry, I got a little ahead of myself. Uh, you would have to give me one momentum and two threat. Probably worth it. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. And this is a daring security on the captain's uh, control part. Control security, and the difficulty is two. The station may assist you with its weapon security. And I have space station defense systems. Mm -hmm. All right. No so help from DSO, unfortunately. I get three dice here? A four. Four. And if I were to challenge a value, would that help? Um, it would recalculate how much momentum threat you would have to spend. Oh. Or good. you could do that afterwards and then reroll any failures re if you don't make it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my dice pool is currently 4d20. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and submit that with my focus. More marbles. Oh. Okay. Hey. All right. That is five successes, which means you get uh, three momentum right back. And yeah, uh, since you bought two additional dice, I believe DSO's phasers are beefy. 
Uh, let's see, 15. So roll me 17 <laughs> challenge dice, please. Yeah, with that piercing, roll a bunch of effects. And this is where you said if I get any zeros, I can re-roll them if I do a thing? If you spend a momentum, yes. Oh, okay. Ah! Yeah. That's uh, two, four, six, nine zeros. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, that's 18 damage, and there's enough effects on the table that uh, you completely bypass their both their shields and their ablative armor to deal 18 total damage. So the end result is DSO opens up a masterful volley um, where it is quite devastating to any other ship. To a smaller ship, this would have decimated it instantly. Uh, however, it seems that the Dreadnought is made of sterner stuff, so while you are able to inflict a number of breaches to it, uh, it is still very much standing at the end of the day. So, uh, mechanics-wise, I actually only need you to roll me one system hit, please, Dag. It's a macro? Yep. Mm -hmm. Where are the macros? Oh, okay. System hit. All right, another breach to structure. Interesting. All right, so uh, at this point, I'm going to say the left wing is more or less Swiss cheese at this point. Um, its shields are maybe at about 20% uh, overall. However, it is now time for the Dreadnought to go again. And the Dreadnought is going to pour everything it has into trying to take out DSO simply because you are the biggest threat right now. So what that means is I currently have 14 threat on the table. I'm going to be spending three of it to give them more dice. And depending on what I roll, we'll see what happens. It's been All a right. good game, everybody. So uh, I'm going to tell you without even doing the full math on that, that that's enough. Your shields are gone. And that means we automatically suffer a breach because the shields go down. So you're going to actually suffer two breaches. Let's roll those real quick uh, to see what they are because that'll flavor how I go forward. All right, so your computers, as expected, and your weapons go down. However, looking at what I rolled, I believe, yes, I can. Uh, what happens is as the Isolitic Array <laughs> slams into DSO, stripping away its shields. Uh oh. You all realize in varying capacities that a subspace rift is beginning to tear open between where the Umbriel is and where DSO is. And I'm going to literally be spending all of my threat to not only end the scene, but cause that subspace tear to open up and envelop the entire area. And that's what we're going to call today's Can you session. Put a can you put a circle on there just so we can have an idea of the scope of that? Uh, it would be the entire, entire map. Are they, oh, okay. like, trying oh. to send us a message or something? Map. Yeah, you're you're not wanted here. <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's, that's the message. But yeah, that's, that's going to be our cliffhanger that we're going to end on. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's a thing. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Looking forward so... to our next campaign. Uh, whatever, whatever that may be. Hey, Thanks. Seco was on the Emerald, so... Hey, it's a Star Trek first. It's one season that only had one episode. I don't think it's <laughs> going to be that bad. <laughs> no, to actually kill you guys would require a significant amount of work. No, to, to sort of <laughs> paint the picture here, I was just going to roll until I got a significant amount of damage so that I could open up a rift. It was always the plan for a rift to open. Knew it. Mm -hmm. I bet it looks cool, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks very cool. All right. So, uh, YouTube, this is where I say goodbye to you. But Twitch, uh, stick around for a little bit longer. But for now, later, YouTube.